good? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to tell you about The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, and the reason I wanted to read it was the fire. Um, oh, the Notre Dame fire. The recent fire. Yeah, the, re the recent fire. And uh, it got me thinking about the book, obviously. But one of the reasons that Victor Hugo wrote the book was uh, in, in his time... Notre Dame was already in this like dilapidated state. Oh, I didn't know that. It was like kind of turning to ruins. It had been a couple hundred years old, and they weren't really. Um, and he was kind of upset about it, and so he wrote the uh, wrote the book. The French translation is like Notre Dame de Paris. I mean, however you say that. Um, instead of like, so Hunchback isn't in the title. That's like the American. Oh. Um, and. Notre Dame is like a character in the book. He spends a lot of time uh, talking about the, the history of the um, building and how it was constructed. But um, the book was very popular and it was very influential and he made a very good point that they have this great building that's like falling to ruins. And it turned into um, like the catalyst for the Great Revival. Uh, they went in and like remade, got everything back to like ship, ship, uh, ship shape, um, because of the book. Um, and like when I was seeing the fire, I thought about that, and especially afterwards when I found out that the building was kind of saved, um, it made me feel kind of hopeful because they've already gone through this. Um, like every, everything's fixable. Um, so I, anyway. Um, a really really famous book like everyone knows Qu Quasimodo, Quasimodo. Uh, Esmeralda um, but what's interesting about the book is um, almost like just like Les Miserables that's like this play um, everyone knows the story of it but I, I think it's like surprising um, how how much of the book is like a history book or has like essays in it um, that are like totally separated. Like if you abridged the book, it's maybe 400 pages. You could probably take out at least 200 pages. <clears throat> are the essays like separate within the book? It'll be like a chapter. That's like completely unrelated to the plot. Yeah. Like as, as an example, um, he'll have a chapter where it's just the history of, Paris, and he tells you like, like its its origins, the little island that it was on, and how it grew and got bigger and turned into. But they're not necessary to like the advancement of the story. No, no. Uh, like the the there's a chapter on um, building Notre Dame, and you you can just slice it out, and it doesn't affect what Quasimodo is up to, uh, and that that's why I. His books are always abridged. Um, like you can't, you couldn't do that with like War and Peace because everything's so like woven together. Mm -hmm. His like, he was like, all right, now it's time to have a history book. Um, and it, it kind of reminds me of like those really old uh, books, like the Iliad or the Odyssey or Dante's Inferno, where. Uh, it's really kind of blurry whether or not you're reading fiction or nonfiction. Um, like eighty percent of the book is like nonfiction, and then you have these characters that are like kind of. It's almost like you're reading a nonfiction book that has these characters in it. Um, Did was it confusing to differentiate between what was fiction and what was nonfiction? Um, not really. I mean. Um, like Quasimodo shows up and it's like okay, okay like, he's clearly fictional clearly fictional <laughs> um, and I've read this before I read it maybe like 15 years ago or something um, and I kind of had a totally different experience like I'm, I'm pretty sure that when I read it I was just like racing to get to the Quasimodo parts um, whereas like this time the essays were just fascinating 
um, and he talks about uh, like the construction of Notre Dame and how it took like 200 years mm -hmm. to build or something like that and so the style of architecture at the top is different than the middle section and is different than the lowest section and it's because of the um, like tastes of the day changed how they were building it and so it's almost looking at like a slice of like um, like rock formation where you see those striations mm -hmm. um, which I, I just thought was like really neat that it's like more almost like a living thing mm -hmm. like changing with the times um, here's another uh, part where he talks about this is about one of my favorite parts um, um, he says that the book killed the church and he says there's two ways to think about it the first way is sort of the obvious wait killed the church in the sense of like the religious aspect of the church or killed the church because it became a tourist attraction and not a holy place um, I guess the former but he <clears throat> has two two parts of it and um, one is the, the obvious one is um, and he's talking about like the Gutenberg press so free access to like accessible affordable books so um, the church no longer has that stranglehold on information people can become mm -hmm. literate and have more ideas um, that's like the obvious way the, the, the obvious uh, one um, the other one which I thought was a lot more interesting is um, he says before the book one of the ways that people would communicate or express themselves um, in a society was actually through their architecture um, so when you would go to like different places in Europe or France um, you would have these like magnificent buildings because it was an outlet for people to uh, express themselves that was also distinct to your particular city or country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when <clears throat> when books became more available, pe now you had um, a way that you could express yourself that was different. You didn't have to have a priority of um, having your town look beautiful. You could do like other things. And it didn't I, involve a massive public works project that cost a ton of money. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't, I don't know how correct he is because like the idea is that <clears throat> churches no longer had to be this these magnificent things. Um, and so he was talking about how the book killed like the physical structure. Um, anyway, like the book is full of these like just interesting um, like essays that he has that like revolve around. Paris and Notre Dame. Um, I think the, the, the last thing I'll say, because I don't feel like talking about the plot because everyone kind of knows it, kind of knows it, is the, his his writing style is one of my favorites. Um, he has like just like the strongest, like most confident language. Everything feels like he's like hammering down with these declarative statements, um, and. You know, I don't even know. Uh, he he talks about like the history of Paris and the history of the building, and it, you know it's certainly a novel. But the way that he says it, he's like you just have to believe him. It just it's that kind of like when someone talks to you and they say it in a certain way, they have a very commanding mm -hmm. presence, and you just know that you have to believe him. And he has that, um, and which um, I think makes it even more noticeable is that he still has flowery language. Like it's, you know, kind of comparable to like a Jane Austen, um, in, in that like flowery way, long sentences. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like Jane Austen is a very uh, apologetic writer. Um, she'll go on and on and on, but a lot of it'll be it was neither this nor that nor this nor that, and he's like the opposite. He's telling you exactly how it is. Um, and I guess that's all I'll kind of say, like, and really, like, the book is a cathedral. 
you know, it, it's like this holy thing. Um, I would recommend it to anyone. Well, it's this holy thing that sounds like it's jam-packed with these relics of history and information and ju kind of like a cathedral. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know when you watch those movies and they, like, have to find some obscure history book and they go down to the crypt that no one's been in and they take out a book that's got cobwebs and you're about to get something. Like, this is what you kind of imagine it's going to be. Really weird, interesting histories. and um, So, yeah, I guess that's about it. So, we're good. Thank you.